This is a tutorial on simplifying radical expressions. The easiest method for simplifying a radical expression is just to simplify the radicand. Now the radicand is anything that's underneath the radical sign or anything that's underneath the square root sign. So let's look at our first example. If we have y is equal to the square root of 13 squared minus 25, well 13 squared minus 25 is very difficult to take the square root of. However, if we square out our 13, we'll get y is equal to 169 minus 25, because 13 squared is 169. Now if you take 169 and you subtract 25 from it, you'll get the square root of 144. 144 is a perfect square of 12. So our y then would be equal to 12. So by simplifying what's underneath the square root, we were eventually able to take the square root of a number that was easy to take the square root of. Here we have the square root of 3 over 48. Now this is difficult to take the square root of, but I can reduce this fraction, 3 48ths, into 1 16th. And I can take the square root of 1 16th, that's just 1 4th. So by reducing my fraction, or simplifying my fraction underneath the square root sign, I was eventually able to take the square root of it. Now this works for variables too. Here we have y is equal to the square root of x squared minus 12x plus 36. Let's look at this quadratic formula underneath our square root sign. I can factor this. I can factor it into an x minus 6 times x minus 6. Or think of that as x minus 6 squared. So if I'm taking the square root of x minus 6 squared, well the square root of a square you end up with just the absolute value. So our solution then would be the absolute value of x minus 6. Another method for simplifying radical expressions is to use the product property. Now the product property tells us that if we have the square root of two numbers multiplied together that's equal to the square root of each of those numbers multiplied together. Now if we have the square root of 36, we know that 36 is a perfect square. Or the square root of 36, well that's just equal to 6. But if we didn't know that 36 was a perfect square of 6, then we could break 36 up into 9 times 4. And if we break up 36 into 9 times 4, then through the product property, we can rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Now the square root of 9 is very easy to take the square root of. That's just 3. And the square root of 4 is easy to take the square root of. That's 2. Now these are multiplied together. 3 times 2 is 6, which is what we got before. So now let's try using the product property to solve these two square roots. Here we have y is equal to the square root of 48. 48 is not a perfect square. Now there's two methods to solving this. The first one is 48. We can break 48 up into its prime factors. 48 is 4 times 12. Neither of these are prime factors. The 4 I can break up into 2 times 2. 2 is a prime factor. The 12 I can break up into 3 times 4. The 3 is a prime factor, but the 4 is not. The 4 I break up into 2 times 2, and these are both prime factors. Now looking at your prime factors, if you have two of the same prime factor, that means you can drop one when you take the square root. So we have these twos, and we have these twos. You can also think of this as the square root of 48. Let's well, y is equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. These are all of our prime factors. Now you can group these twos together and these twos together. And we can think of this as y is equal to the square root 
of two squared times three times two squared. And if I can think of it like this, that means I can also write it as y is equal to the square root of two squared times the square root of three times the square root of two squared. Now the square root of two squared, you just drop your square, or they cancel out, so this will just be two. The square root of three, I can't simplify, so it's still the square root of three. And the square root of two squared, again, the square root and the square cancel, so we're left with just two. So we have two times the square root of three times two, or you can think of that as y is equal to four, two times two, square roots of three. Now the other way of doing this is to look for perfect squares that are divisible by our number. So here we have y is equal to the square root of 63. Now easy perfect squares that we know are 4, 9, and 16. You can use 25 too, and you can keep going up. But the idea is to look for perfect squares that we can divide into 63. Now I cannot divide 4 into 63, but I can divide 9. 63 is 9 times 7. Now if I can write it this way, I can also write it as the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. The square root of 9, that's 3. The square root of 7 is a prime factor, so that just comes along as the square root of 7. So the square root of 63 then is just 3 square roots of 7. Now the product property works for variables as well. Here we have y is equal to the square root of x squared, y cubed, and z to the fourth. Now we don't want to take the square root of any negative numbers. So before I simplify this, I'm going to say that x, y, and z are all greater than zero. Now using the product property on this problem, we would break this up into y is equal to the square root of x squared times the square root of y cubed times the square root of z to the fourth. Now when we take the square root of x squared, the square root and the square will cancel and you'll be left with the absolute value of x. Except we said that x is positive, so we're not going to worry about the absolute value signs. Now our y cubed, this I can write as the square root of y times y squared. And if I write it this way, I can also write it as the square root of y times the square root of y squared. Now the square root of y I can't simplify, it's just the square root of y. The square root of y squared, well that would be the absolute value of y, but again y is positive, so this just becomes a y. Lastly, our z to the fourth, I can write that as z squared times z squared. And if I can write it that way, I can also write it as the square root of z squared times the square root of z squared. Now the square root of z squared is just z, and again, that's just z, so we have z times z, or z squared. So if I put all this back together, I have y is equal to my x times y times the square root of y and then multiplied by z squared. Now I usually like to put my square roots at the end of my expression, so I'm going to rewrite this as y is equal to x times y times z squared times the square root of y or x, y, z squared, square root of y. Now the last method of simplifying radical expressions that we're going to talk about is using the quotient property. 
The quotient property tells us if we have the square root of a fraction, in this case a over b, that's equal to the square root of a over the square root of b. Now for example, if we had the square root of 4 over 100, well I can simplify this radicand, or this fraction, 4 over 100, into 1 25th. And I can take the square root of 1 25th, that's just 1 5th. Now if I didn't want to use this method, I could also use the quotient property. The square root of 4 over 100 is equal to the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 100. The square root of 4 is easy to take the square root of, it's just 2. And the square root of 100 is pretty easy to take the square root of, it's 10. So we have 2 divided by 10 or 1 fifth, which is exactly what we got before. So now let's try practicing the quotient property. Here we have the square root of 400 divided by 25. Well, by using the quotient property, I can write this as the square root of 400 divided by the square root of 25. Now the square root of 400, that's just 20. And the square root of 25 is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So that means the square root of 400 over 25 is just 4. Now this works for variables too. Here we have the square root of x to the fifth divided by 25a squared. Now using the quotient property I can write this as the square root of x to the fifth over the square root of 25a squared. Now my numerator here, I can write that as the square root of x squared times x squared times x. And if I write it that way, that's the same as the square root of x squared times the square root of x squared times the square root of x. Now assuming that my x is positive and that my a is positive, that means the square root of x squared is just x. Do that again for my second square root of x squared. And the square root of x I can't simplify any further. So my numerator then is just x times x times the square root of x. Or x squared square root of x. Now my denominator, this 25a squared under the square root, I can write as 25 times a squared and if I write it like that, that's the same as the square root of 25 times the square root of a squared. The square root of 25 is just 5. And since my a is positive, the square root of a squared is just a. So my denominator then is just 5a. So the square root of x to the fifth divided by 25a squared is just x squared square root of x over 5a. And that completes the tutorial on simplifying radical expressions.